Yes, it is the lunch break here on Real News Communications Network. It's Friday, kids. Gather around, celebrate. Come join us for lunch. <laughs> Come join us for what's trending and hot in today's world. We've got it all for you. I am your host for this edition of the lunch break, Matt Stoker. Alongside me is Josh Hart in the studio. Hello, everyone. Running tunes. I just banged my knee on the side of this table, and it hurt really bad. <laughs> it was gonna be everything I could do to keep this a family-friendly show right now. I appreciate your efforts <laughs> and oh, self-censorship. Thank you. And in the control room is Zach Lewis. How are you? It's a mean table in there, Josh. I've run my knee to that a couple times. It's rough. Mm. I don't know what we can do about it. But This thing is a beast. Yeah. Spare no expense at RNCN. <laughs> You're watching us live right now on Facebook. Find us on Facebook by searching Real News Communications Network, or you may be watching the replay on YouTube, and if you are, thank you for that. Come join us live when the show is on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 12 to 1 o'clock Central Time. Again, just search Real News Communications Network on Facebook. Give us a follow. Be notified when we go live. And don't forget, you can comment on Facebook. Yes. Like Sarah Crowley just said, ouch, I've done that before too, banging the... the uh knee on the old table yeah it is a doozy we so. are connecting with our fans left and right people know our pain <laughs> matt i gotta i gotta yeah the bow around the neck did you mean to leave that on <laughs> i kind of forgot it was there i'll, I'll be completely honest but uh yes i meant to leave it on i want yeah I wanted, and a to say, I wanted to say something but i respect that i didn't and that you you yeah. went for it yeah, yeah good no. for you i I'm think it's a good, good look today. you should you should rock that more often i should yeah, yeah. I, not enough guys rock, rock ribbons around the neck it's like a classier I can't even say it it's a classier bolo tie is what it is <laughs> it's really it's very like, yeah it's like very a southern bell kind of look yeah so, I noticed a headline today. I didn't notice a headline today. We noticed it doing prep. I'm going to pull back the <laughs> curtain be a little bit. <laughs> Came across this one to today, fellas. It is the constant fight between smokers and non-smokers. Now, we, li we live, we work right around the corner from the smokers hangout here at Lincoln Center, which is sort of a little corner yep. tucked away next to the garage where I don't know if it was set up at some point in the past, the long distant past that nobody remembers anymore, or if they've just you know started congregating in this area, but that seems to be the smokers area. But I mean, we're sitting here watching the staircase and we see the same people walk by every hour, it yeah. seems like. They're constantly going out. And this is the drum beat has always been for non smokers, hey, what's the deal? Smokers yeah. get to take a fifteen minute I don't know what it is. I don't know is is there law around when smokers get to to take a break or not? I'm or not sure. I think it's just like what, 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 kind of whatever. What, from what I can tell from the leather jacket ponytail guy, <laughs> it is just whenever carte whatever launch, he whenever like he feels like going down, he hops down there. Yeah. and and does that. So the the guy is uh, uh, the pet, the petition started because the guy is saying that he is upset and he did the math, sat down and timed it out where he yeah. found that that a smokers over the course of a year take breaks that add up to three to five extra vacation days. That's a, a sizable chunk of time. So non-smokers, in lieu of picking up smoking, should get five extra days. Then everything should be fair. I, I'm i not going to say I disagree with that, although I, I, I wonder, I mean, that just seems like such a, the, the whole smoking break thing is such, uh, I don't know, dangerous waters, I guess, when yeah. it comes to like trying to figure this out managerially because you want to give people the ability to go and and do what they need to do to f get through the day or whatever but yeah. it is it is a weird tension between smokers and non-smokers in the in the office when you see someone stepping out every hour or every couple of hours for 15 20 minutes um well and i don't know the rules if you can just have a company where you say there's no smoke breaks allowed like you get your hour lunch that's a break that you get by law yeah or half hour however they do it uh, but you get no smoke breaks. I don't know if legally you're allowed to do that. Um, See, it's 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 a weird space we're in with with uh, cigarettes because they they are yeah they're drug like any other right nicotine. There's lots of good 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 hearty stuff in there. Everything a sure. growing boy needs. Like I have to if I have to pass a drug test to work at a place. So there's a handful of things I can't do, but smoking is acceptable. Like that's that's curating an addiction at work. Like that's that's you going and you know, certainly that's that's, that's hitting it. And and I I've always been of the mindset like, look, if you can't do everything else, 
I think we should be allowed, or our private employers, I guess, should be allowed to be like, you probably shouldn't be taking smoke breaks. If you need to quit to do that, like, just take the plunge, you know? According to the Texas Workforce Commission, uh, an employer can legally deny any extra breaks for smoking. Okay. So they are an option that you can take up on. So more like if they if they offer a break, then you can choose to use that time to go smoking if you if you wish, but we're not going to give you any extra time. Yeah, extra time to do that. I, so. I've heard of people say your company offers a 15-minute break every few hours or something like that, yeah. it, uh, as well as a lunch. People may want to say, well, I want to break that up into a five-minute chunk here or there and go and – and smoke. I don't know. I know it's not the same. Like people will say, "Well, I'm not allowed to go, not allowed to go to the corner and drink for a while if I if I want to, <laughs> even though that's a legal substance as well." I assume that would affect my performance in some way. So that's the counter argument to that. I guess the conversation for me is: is after you fix this problem, let's say you say no more uh, smoke breaks, but then how about the guy that gets up and walks to the water cooler every like half hour, sure, and chats about what show he saw the day before, or you know. Then, then you start banning that. Then, that goes down a slippery slope for me. The the real truth behind this is if if non smokers took into account the amount of time that they also wasted at work, yeah, it probably would be a little bit closer to even than what <laughs> well, you think it is. Yeah, I mean the guy who sat there and tallied up how long it took <laughs> yeah. for the smokers to be gone. That guy alone spent countless yeah. amount of time. Or or sitting around complaining, hey, you see that guy? He's going smoking again. Like what's the <laughs> really? deal? Yeah. Really, Bobby? really, Bobby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. The amount of time that you spend at the water cooler. Um, so yeah, that's a good that's a good question to pose to our audience. Do you think non smokers should be given? extra vacation days per year. Sarah Curley had a comment on Facebook about this. Uh, what about coffee breaks? Caffeine. Hmm? Okay. Because people, no. yeah, people, yeah, I mean, fair. it's kind of like the water cooler, but a little different. Water, we need to survive. Caffeine, however, is an option. Uh, what do we land on that? I, I, yeah, I certainly know a lot of people who have to have their coffee in the morning or have to have coffee throughout the day, and they're either going down to Starbucks or they're making coffee or whatever and that all that stuff takes time it takes a lot more time to to make a cup of coffee than it does to just pour a little water in a cup i think the best solution for this is to allow smokers to have their breaks uh and stand behind the work that you do right i think no matter what if you're a, if you go down and you have a smoke break every two hours but you come back and then the remaining hour and 45 minutes you kill it and get more stuff done than the non-smoker who's sitting there complaining about you and watching cat videos on YouTube. Sure. Then, then you're going to be fine. Uh, and so I think just stand behind the work that you do. And if you can get your work done and have a cigarette, then great. If you can get your work done and have a cup of coffee, phenomenal. Let that yeah. let that tar fuel your fingers <laughs> yeah, exactly. and work harder for uh, it. Yeah. The, the problem that I would have, and I'm glad none of you guys uh, take smoke breaks. Uh, would be the smell. Like coming back, the smell bothers me. Yeah. Uh, and that would be my issue, not so much being gone every would however long. But, but it's just the, the yeah, smell. sitting down and you're yeah. smelling smoke all the but. time. So, yeah, should non-smokers get extra vacation days? It's an interesting question, and we'd love to see your answers to that on Facebook. Go and find this live post and comment and let us know what you think. We'll be checking that throughout the show. When we come back... We will be back. Don't worry. We're here until <laughs> 1 o'clock. Well, when we come back, a gift bag that offers the right to self-protection. Who's getting it? And what is it? We'll talk about it coming up here on the Lunch Break on RNCN. Stick around.
And we're back here on the lunch break on RNCN. Again, the question posed to our audience today is should non-smokers get extra vacation days per year to make up for the time that they're not taking smoking breaks? Uh, Samantha checking in saying, no, you shouldn't. I guess your reward is extra life. So you get some extra time. You just make it up uh, in your 80s, I guess, is what, <laughs> what, you, what you get to enjoy. You get to live longer. Yeah. That's what you get. So exactly. congrats. Enjoy. Congratulations. You made a good life choice, I suppose. I wonder if this will extend when you get smoking breaks if uh, marijuana is legalized. I assume it's probably the same <laughs> as alcohol. But I can't imagine, no. Because, <laughs> like, if anything, like, smoking is a stimulant, whereas marijuana is, is, is it, the opposite of that. Right. Yeah, yeah, you'll be sleeping. Yeah, exactly. So. Josh, you should try some – they got strains, man. They, <laughs> they have caffeine There's infused. different, yeah, there's, caffeine there's different things. Oh, They're doing wait. crazy things out in Colorado, man. Who, who knows? Just wait. All right, so the Oscars are coming. The Oscars are coming up, right? Yeah, this, this they should week. be airing pretty soon. Uh, this weekend, mm -hmm. Sunday. Okay, that's how on top of it I am. Sunday, <laughs> the Oscars, yes. the Oscars are coming up. The insides of the gift bags, at least some of the insides of the gift bag, have been revealed, and a very interesting item is in there. Maybe has something to do with the culture that we're living in today, the worry surrounding, or just the maybe the self importance going on in Hollywood that clearly they're all going to be under attack. Josh, you've had a look at what's in the gift bags. So this this year, the Oscar gift bags include a key ring size pepper spray, <laughs> gel pepper spray, two personal body alarms, and a kit that tells you if your drink has been drugged. Where in the world wow. what? are these Oscar people going after <laughs> the Oscars are done Yeah, you need that much extra protection? Now, is this a – with – all this, the the conversation happening yeah. around uh, Harvey Weinstein comes yep. to mind. Mm -hmm. Is this a more of a political statement rather than we think you're going to need stuff to make sure your <laughs> that, your drug that, is not that drink? has to be it. It has to be a political statement because I mean these people obviously have protection. They have security guards. They have bodyguards. And I think it's just so. I think for me when I first saw it, I think it's to make those people aware the that there's other people who don't have. 24-hour security who yeah. don't have people who are always monitoring them and watching them you know and so there are need, people who legitimately do yeah. carry pepper spray and i I, I, yeah. I don't fault them for it my wife for the longest time carried a key ring pepper spray on her on her uh key ring to the point where apparently those expire after a while because i was i'm i'm a dumb <laughs> and i tried it <laughs> see it, where it, this and, is going and it didn't work so but after you try it on yourself no, or God, you just no, spray it, it out. Spray out in the air yeah, yeah, yeah. which again is bad uh, but it didn't work. So yeah. those are kind of things that, you know, you have to kind of be careful of. I don't know, Zach, what do you think? Uh, useful items or political statement on the on behalf of the Oscar uh, gift bag? I mean, a little bit of both. I, on the one hand, yes, they are physically useful. Also, yeah, it's a little bit of mindfulness. I know somebody talked to, what was it, Vanity Fair, talked to Jimmy Kimmel, and they were like, any chance you're going to talk about the uh, you know, the Me Too movement at, at the Oscars? And he said, yeah, absolutely. Like, that's 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 going to be in. Whereas the Golden Globes, they kind of opted to try to leave it out a little. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think the Oscars are kind of embracing um, the political kind of, you know, what's going on in Hollywood? How, how, how could they not, right? The, the Oscars are the Super Bowl of film you for that to. year. Yeah, and yeah. if we look at what's been happening in Hollywood this year, allegations that have come out, um, it would be silly of them to try to avoid it. Now, sticking things in gift bags, that also seems a little silly. I don't know what kind of message that's sending, but I appreciate that people are going to have kits so that they know if their drinks are drugged or not. That's I mean, important. It seems borderline tacky to me. It, to me, it seems like you're you're. It's not nece not necessary for the people you're giving it to. Now, if you were saying, "Hey, uh, you know, part of our being a part of the Oscar thing is that we're donating this, uh, we're donating like you know thirty thousand kits to pe people in need." Right. That's different. But when you're giving it to them, you're obviously it's trying an empty to, gesture. It's an empty gesture. Yeah. yeah. And so I think they're trying to like lob on to something that's not their fight, not their cause. You know, I don't think women are crying out for more protection. Like for like more like physical like I want to f you know, be able to fight back. They're they're fighting out to being treated fairly. So to me, it just seems it seems a little too tongue in cheek for me. And I, I was kind of like, eh. yeah, it, it it does feel very stuntish. Whereas if they had put something in there like a certificate saying, hey, we've made yeah. a donation on your behalf to whatever this charity or this place that teaches women self defense sure. or, or something something of that nature, that might me make a little bit more of a difference than say. Hey, we're giving you this this variety pack of 
of pepper sprays for you to t- for you to try out, yeah. I guess, on the next person that uh, approaches you. Little fun fact, kind of off the topic, but do you know what the entirety of the swag bag is valued at? They're always crazy expensive. I know they put things like iPads and other uh, yeah. other things like that in there. Does it say what else is in there? Can we? Uh, no, it just has those. But okay. then it goes in and says uh, the the entirety of the bag I'm comes gonna... in at this value. Okay, I'm gonna guess ten thousand dollars. So okay. Wait, wait. wait. I'll, I'll lowball that. I'll go. You guys twelve hundred. Guys are way off. So they, they, they do have some more stuff. I'm I'm seeing here, a twenty three and me kit. I don't know what that is. It's a DNA. It's like a okay. Uh, yeah. D- it's a com- check your history. A commissioned original painting certificate. So someone okay. will paint you an original painting. What? Yep. A, a uh, commission. Yeah. So you can go and like I I have a painting at my house that I had commissioned to get done. Yeah. You can get that done. It's like a gift card for someone to go paint yeah. you. Uh, I don't know. Any, uh, Rogue maple syrup is the only thing I actually know <laughs> out of all this stuff. It comes it? in at $100,000. Wow, really? $100,000. $10,000 sounded exuberant. Yeah, but in, in total value. Shout out, to, shout out to Andy in the comments for totally leaking that right before we got to uh, it. Oh, great. <laughs> thanks, Andy. Yeah, thanks for blowing our spot. <laughs> $100,000. So, Again, a $100,000 gift bag with with some little items to make you make it look like you're up on the times of what's going on. So here's probably one of the where it kind of kicks in. It's a six night stay at Hawaii's. I'm gonna mispronounce this Kaloa Landing Resort in Papayu. I don't know, sure. but that goes for three thirty a night. So that's six nights plus all the gift bags. So that's probably where a lot of that cash yeah. came in. But uh, who who gets one of these gift bags? It can't just be everybody, right? Is it the winners? I mean, what is that? It must I, be the nominees, right? I think it's the nominees. Yeah. yeah, all the nominees. Well, no wonder it's, it's a, a no 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 wonder it's an award, it's a it's an honor just to be nominated. Now it makes sense. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly, it is. Speaking of money, when we come back, you may not be getting a hundred thousand dollar gift bag, but can you make a good living driving for Lyft or Uber? We'll find out. A very reputable university has done a research on this. We'll tell you what they said coming up after this on the lunch break on RNCN. Stick around. And welcome back, everyone, to the Lunch Break on RNCN, a product of Real News Communications Network. Of course, you can find us on Facebook right now. Search us, Real News Communications Network, on Facebook. Give us a follow. Give us a like. Leave us a comment, anything that you want to talk about. In fact, we've been asking folks the question, should non-smokers be given extra days off per year because they don't take smoking breaks? Let us know what you think about that. And uh, find us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday right here. Same place, same great place, same great flavor. All your friends Stop. are here. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> right here. Um, let's talk about Lyft. I t- actually took my very first Lyft. Now, I've taken an Uber before, but I took mm-hmm. my first. I ordered my first Lyft uh, a couple of days ago. I went from Deep wow. Ellum to the Omni Hotel. And uh, it was a very 
very fun experience. I know I'm way behind the times on this. I know everybody knows what Lyft and Uber is. I've never but taken a Lyft before in my life. Have you never taken? You've never taken? Have you taken an Uber? Uh, twice actually. Okay. Both in case of emergency. There were both cases where I didn't have my car or something. Yeah, I you know just had to take it. It was never like a choice. I mean, it's a great service, right? It, it's uh, we were we were in downtown and we had parked our car somewhere and we wanted to go to a restaurant in Deep Ellum and we had parked our car kind of on the other end of, of downtown near yeah. the West End. And so it was, do, well, do I want to pull out and pay another $10 for parking or do I want to just leave my car where it is, pay a couple bucks, get to the other side of town, do whatever we want, and then yeah. come back, right? It, it made more sense than trying to find a parking spot. It's not bad. And if you're going out drinking or whatever, then, sure. then uh, yeah, I think Uber or Lyft is a great option. Now, the guy that we rode with, actually both, uh, both of the guys that we rode with there and back, were very happy. Their cars were very clean. It was a very nice experience. And they both said they enjoyed driving for Lyft. In fact, the second guy, we, we talked to him a little bit more. And he said, yeah, I just do it uh, when I have some free time. I, uh, I, if I'm sitting around, I could either be sitting at home or I could go drive for a few hours and make a little money and uh, see how it goes. But it turns out that that is not a winning proposition if you really want to make a go at being a Lyft driver, yeah. according to MIT. So MIT put this study out? MIT put this study out, and they, they took a look at the cost of operating your car um, for the amount of time that you're driving versus what you reasonably make per hour or per ride. And it turns out you're lucky if you're breaking even when it comes to yeah. the mileage that you're putting on your car, the gas you're putting in, the you're going to have to get your oil changed eventually. So when you average all that out, you make maybe 10 cents more than it, than you would per per so, hour. So yeah, they said the mean profit was three dollars and thirty seven cents per hour, uh, with seventy four percent of drivers earning less than that for you know for, for the national average. And then uh, they said that my uh, fifty nine cents per mile is what you would earn essentially. Yeah, uh, and, and you're spending somewhere around like yeah. I think it was thirty or something the, like that. The, co the cost you with you uh, you incur is thirty cents per mile. So see, see, there was a time uh, for me back in back in back in the dark times when I was working <laughs> part time jobs after college before I found this wonderful gig, yeah. uh, where I thought about driving for Lyft or Uber. I was like, well, it seems easy. Like I wouldn't have like a direct manager over me. I just go drive when I want. I set my own hours. It it's sounds great. like a, it sounds like a cool gig, right? Yeah, but every time I looked at it, every time I thought about it, I, I, I would look at the math and I'd kind of look at forums and read about it. And everybody said it's just not worth it. You kind of make less than minimum wage at best, and that's yeah. assuming you're driving during peak times yeah i uh i i also looked into it for a little bit i never got really far enough to i got to the point where it was uber that i was looking at and they were sending me um you know like driving obviously they want to check your driving record and all yeah. that stuff and it got to the i i said no nah, this is too much work i don't want to i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to do all this i don't want to go through this just to maybe drive and make a little money i thought it might sound cool but yeah you're right when you when you factor in the amount I'm paying for my own gas. I'm, I'm paying for everything, really, I'm, I'm, and I'm letting strangers in my car. It's not worth it to me to, to do that. Now, yeah. having never driven Uber, I do have what I believe is uh, advice for any Uber driver on how they can make more money. Having never done it before in my life. Okay. Uh, I had a friend that was doing it, and I told him, he was like, yeah, I never really know where to go or what to do. I was like, dude, get on the, get on like Guide Life or something. Look what's going on in Dallas. If there's like a concert at the American Island Center, go drive around there, right? Oh, yeah, okay, right. What? No, you, you look like that wouldn't make a difference. No, no, that does make a difference. The, the best way to make quick money with that is, yeah. one, only drive from like 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. So that's four hours. That cuts, cuts down your driving around time. Mm -hmm. And then stock your car with... Jack in the Box tacos <laughs> and Waterburger taqui taquitos and charge five bucks a piece. Not a bad idea. You would make a killing driving drunk people around, selling them lukewarm food that they would love. <laughs> you have one of those bags that keeps things warm. Yeah. Right. Because yeah, you have to offer those. a bottle of water, I think, as part of the deal. Oh, do you? Yeah. Give a bottle of water or something gives you higher ratings. But so have that. But then, like, you could charge extra for Coke or whatever it is, you know, Mountain Dew. Red Bull. Yeah, just have a little shop in, your, little in shop. your passenger yeah. seat. I don't. I don't know if I would ever, if I could ever eat something an Uber driver can. If you're <laughs> drunk enough, you can get a will eat anything. Yeah. If, I, if I'm desperate enough for an Uber, <laughs> I suppose that makes sense. Yeah. I wanted to mention Sarah Crilly brought up an interesting point in the comments. Sure. Uh, should you tip your Uber driver? No. 
<laughs> you don't. They say not to. Yeah, they you're say the guy not from to. Reservoir Dogs that's saying not to tip. That's, now, see, that's the, where you are. Here's the thing where Uber and Lyft are different because you can offer a tip on Lyft. That's it's built into the app. Yeah. You can offer them a little bit of a tip. Now, one of the things that I that I liked about Lyft is that. I signed up, and you, you can find codes everywhere for $5 yep. off or free. They're giving away free rides, basically, which is another reason why, why they probably don't make a whole lot of money when it comes to, to driving. But you can – I don't know that – my wife uses Lyft a, a, a lot when she goes out with her friends, and I don't I don't know that she's ever really paid full price for it. She's always got some sort of coupon code or promo code or something that's covering that cost. But yeah, you can tip the driver on that. Yeah. But uh, offering cash to the to the Uber driver, no. 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 I I had a cousin who worked for Uber Corporate in Chicago, be- back before the Madden Ten Days came out about about Uber Corporate. Uh-huh. Uh, but he told me, don't tip. It's factored in there. And it's the, 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 yeah, don't don't tip. <laughs> it's fact we pay them terribly. It's yeah, already we pay factored them terribly in. <laughs> already. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> They're miserable. No, no. Because I asked, hey, I want to like, do I tip? What's the protocol? Yeah. He goes, yeah, no, you're fine. All right, cool. So that makes me wonder that if you were to run your own little bodega out of your, oh, your yeah. Uber car, I'm would sure they, they would. I'm sure they would that. not yeah. allow you to do that. Well, I think Lyft had tipping, and Uber just added tipping. Sarah and Andy both pointed that out. Okay. I think. It's isn't it beneficial for like the boss for the person at the top of, of the corporation to say don't tip the employees? That's like any restaurant manager. Like ideally, why would they want their customers to spend more money on a service they're already getting? The way they see it, personally, they're like, well, the less they spend, the more likely they are to come back here. So no, you shouldn't be throwing big tips out at waiters. Just pay what's on the menu and you're on your way. Trader or Trader Joe's, uh, Joe's Crab Shack did something like that. So it makes sense for the people at the top of Uber to say don't tip. No, no, just, just pay, just us pay us and don't worry about paying the driver. Yeah. He gets his you're, I mean, right you're trying to shame me zach <laughs> well, and it's not gonna work i'm shaming the uh. system josh that's what i'm shaming <laughs> is that a thing that would work in a restaurant if you don't tip then the i guess because i i factor tip into the total cost yeah. of, of a meal so i'm thinking if i get an appetizer that's going to drive up my tip so maybe i won't get the appetizer and instead you know, I, and i'll just leave them a, a decent tip I, I i don't think so i i always factor tip in and when i when i when i have an uber driver i don't know they just they're like my next door neighbor they're a person they live in my community i think why not throw them a couple of bucks leave a fiver in the car when you get out and don't say anything are we going to get onto a tipping conversation at some point in time <laughs> this is bound to happen this is gonna it may yeah. not be today yeah but it's gonna happen at some point uh, right. where all of our vices come out I, I'm I'm I will say I'm a decent tipper when it comes to a restaurant. I tip to I tip at restaurants, but if you're not supposed to tip, I don't. Like if the system's broken, then Uber needs to fix the system. Well, not have me pay more for a service I'm already buying. Yeah, I I agree, but who's to say you're not supposed to tip? That's what the tip is. Uber. It's, it's, it's a little extra something from one human to but another. Where does that stop? That, that's a good question. When do we have to stop paying? Yeah, like <laughs> at some point in time, you go enough's enough. Stop. I, I love actually that we're getting. We, we are going to talk about that now. Uh, like in New York and other fine establishments, yeah. they're getting away from tipping altogether, even at at restaurants where they say no tipping, mm-hmm. and yeah. the, because they factor in the food, they pay their servers a good, decent you know, salary and a good wage. And if you're not a good server, you get fired. So there's no like incentive to be better. Yeah. Uh, and it's more of a group mentality, which works out better for everyone. What they were finding was that the servers made more money than the chefs at high end establishments because mm. you'd Off have of a, tipping. Uh, yeah, because you'd have a you know eight hundred dollar tab, if that, maybe higher. And so if you got twenty percent of that, yeah, you're, 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 you're yeah. well over a hundred bucks. Sure. Yeah, bank you're making, making, making bank. So yeah. uh, the chefs weren't making that. So chefs who spent all this time, effort. and energy in a culinary school yeah. had to drop out of of being a chef just to make money as a server mm-hmm. so this is a bad system so they fixed the system and said across the board we pay our chefs x amount pay our bartenders x amount pay our staff x amount no tipping it's all put into the food that's where you actually pay so now the filet went from 45 to you know 75 or whatever it is yeah but you, that's the that's the total cost well, I love that. Joe's Crab Shack did that, and yeah, I agree. That that is the answer. That's where they should all be across the board. But we're not we're not quite. Well, there now wait, yet. You've, you you guys have both worked in the restaurant. No, were you, Zach, you were never a server. right? Technically, never a server. Okay. No, I was never server material. Um, but would you <laughs> would you want to work at a restaurant that no. uh, that operated that way? No, or, like the because the, I love the cash. Right, the dry the um the gamble. I guess the lottery of man, this table might they might drop a twenty on, on sure. me. 
on a yep. whatever a ten dollar yeah. tab or whatever. They no. they might do that. I cleaned house in East Texas as a server, putting on that every grandson in the world face and charming old women everywhere. That I, I cleaned up at yeah. the jalapeno tree in in uh, Jacksonville, Texas. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, but I would not want to work if it was if it was fair because I would have made you know <laughs> twelve bucks an hour. Yeah, and. I was making well over that, so right. why would I want that to change? But ultimately, that's fair. I, I'm someone's in the back preparing food all day. I take it from the ten feet from the <laughs> bar, from the little bar where the, where they place the food to a table, and I set, I set it down. Yeah, and I go, there you go. <laughs> Give me Where's my, cash. my chip? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that in the grand scheme of things, that's not fair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I took your order and I put it in the system, but that's data entry. They pay, pay those folks eight, nine, ten bucks an hour. So essentially, I'm doing data entry and then I'm going to the end of the line and carrying your food out. Yeah, I'm bringing you a water refill or, or a tea refill, whatever. I work in the industry and I love the cash. You know, it paid for half of college and I got, to, I got to buy a car in cash. I made a lot of cash doing that. But the system was broken. I worked at a restaurant for nine months and I never once made server because. Apparently, it's very difficult to do. You got to memorize all three pages of the menu, and you're exactly right. Walk sure. things from A to B. You got to touch hot food and plates. You got to deal with customers, which, if the guys in the back want to do that, they wouldn't be in the back. You got to deal with dirty dishes. You got to run things up with management. You got to clock in and out. So it's tough, but I agree. I, I, I agree with you. We shouldn't, ideally, we wouldn't have a system where you have to tip. They would just get paid right off the yeah. top, and we're square. But we're not there yet, right? So you got to tip somewhere. But no, no, because then you're only perpetuating the bad system. Yeah. I'm continuing a bad system because I keep playing into it going, well, it's a bad system. <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> Just stop the bad system. And we, I'm sorry. See, I get all worked up about this. Yeah. You're, you're Mr. Pink in Reservoir because, Dogs. So that's no, no, you. Yeah. That's the same thing. Like someone asking, oh, yeah, are you going to tip your mailman? Like, I'm not tip. What? No. Tip your mailman. That's, that's a thing. I've never heard that. That's a thing. Tip your mailman. I do tip my hairstylist. Sure. I've heard um, of leaving the mailman like a gift for Christmas or something like that. Why? I, that's a good question. I've never heard of that, it's actually. It's a very good question. Yeah. Maybe right. I'm a misanthrope. I don't know. But, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I ask the same way. Yeah. Like, why? Yeah. Like, what he do we brings do? me my mail, like, half the time at best. Rain like, or shine, yeah, Josh. Yeah, it's like one of those deals. And it's like, at some point in time, do your job. You get paid to do your job. <laughs> if, you, if you'll stop delivering my neighbor's mail to my house, <laughs> yeah. then, I can, then I'll think about yeah. it, right? Here's Sorry. a big question. No, no. Do you do you tip, Do you tip your bartender if you're drinking for free? Yes. Well, I guess we'll delve into that a little bit more <laughs> whenever we come back here on the lunch break on RNCN. Keep up with us on Facebook and uh, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. We'll be right back. back to the lunch break on rnc and find us on facebook find us on youtube leave a comment leave a like leave a follow leave a hello uh on on uh, facebook andy Dra- draper said i was a uh, cheapskate that is not <laughs> true well i mean i he, am uh, te- very generous technically it, it's it's plural he accused all of us of being Ge- cheap generous all caps. Caps. yeah uh, i was taking oh, the i'm heat. sorry yeah. i'm sorry mr Moneybags, andy <laughs> yeah. who's yeah. giving out money freely to anyone yeah. who asks for it <laughs> 
<laughs> or doesn't ask for it. Uh, Sarah Sarah also said Josh was the uh, what best server award? Exactly. Yeah. I, I was a two star trainer server. So well, how many stars are there? <laughs> two. That yeah, was top. That's an odd system. It is an odd system. <laughs> yeah, I would have thought five. Well, they had a, it was a jalapeno was the name tag, and so they had one star on each tip. And I guess they ran a place to put stars. So <laughs> you can't you can't fill out stars across yeah, the if jalapeno. If you were a two star, you made minimum wage base. The jalapeno constellation. Yeah. What? So it was great. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, minimum wage base, yeah. and then tips on top of that. Because back then it was like five twenty five was minimum wage, and okay. five star was five twenty five. <laughs> Woo. I really Make want to it. dig back into this tipping thing. We no, should no. probably move oh, on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Save it for another day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, there's a lot to mine here. Um, yeah, we asked the question, do you tip your bartender if you're drinking for free? Because you can be a volunteer drinker. I, I don't know if you're dr- drinking for free here. I assume it's probably... Well, I don't know, Josh. Why don't you tell us the story of so how to become a volunteer police drinker? Police in Vancouver are looking for people to volunteer uh, to get drunk in front of cops so they can practice their sobriety checks. This sounds uh, all right. Yeah. Irving had this, and a friend of mine uh, knew a guy who knew a guy, one of those kind of things, yeah. who was doing the training for police. And this is a real thing. happens in cities all over. And they pay you. Well, not pay you. you it's free. Uh, but you show up at the city hall, and they get you drunk. Okay. Yeah. And so they sit down, and they make it way too, like, science Because they sit down, and they go, do you want to get drunk, or do you want to get real drunk? <laughs> like, well, I'm here. Let's get real drunk. <laughs> let's get let's get messy with yeah. it. Let's get lit. Yeah. But then they go hop on the scale, and then they weigh me, which is kind of embarrassing. Oh, so they're giving you, like, the, yeah, the actual, scientific like, amount. Yeah, they have, like, a little peeker, and they're, like, pouring out the vodka. I'm like, okay, you've ruined it. Like, if I'm not doing shots, it's, <laughs> it's not it's, fun. Yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> so I got uh, successfully at what they would say – really drunk which i think was three times the legal limit okay um and i had then i had to go stand in front of officers four i assume yeah i had to go stand in front of officers and they had to judge whether i was sober (laughs) or whether i was but they knew no no because some weren't oh okay so some were plants they're like hey we're not not, didn't have a a drop some were at 0.08 some were at 0.06 so they were always at different like yeah okay i was the you. Far side, but you were the guy with the problem. I remember, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ossifer, you're pretty. Yeah, I was the one. I um, half of them said, "Yeah, he's drunk," and the other half said, "I think he's fine." So really, yeah. And a fun trick, if you as probably shouldn't say this, but no, no. If you say you have astigmatism in your eye, they can't do the eye test. Oh, and the so- eye test is one that you can't fake. You can't like right. If your eyes jigger, you, know, you can't do anything about about that. So were, did they tell you to say that, or no, no, no. you just knew that? He, they were like, do you have astigmatism? I was like, no. Okay. Boop. So I was like, wait a minute. If I ask, like, oh, yeah, if we ask, then we can't do the pen test. Oh, but, very interesting. Yeah, so. This is a show about learning. That's, yeah. that's what <laughs> yeah. this We're giving is. you life tips yeah. to take with you. Take this. Use this for the rest of your life. <laughs> Um, do you remember how much it took to get you to that point? How what what was the scientific amount uh, to get you to really, really lit? They had a beaker. I think I had, like, the equivalent of, like, Six six shots of vodka, uh-huh. which I mean, college Josh should have been totally fine with. <laughs> uh, so, so I remember feeling kind of like buzzed. Yeah, but yeah, and that's the scary part is because three times the legal limit, and oh, prior so they, to that, so they tested you to make sure that you were in yeah, fact yeah. That. But prior to, prior Josh to that fact, would be like I'm probably okay to drive. Yeah. So like that for me was a learning thing of going, hey, okay, if I feel tipsy at all, you're probably I'm over the probably limit. over the limit, and yeah. I had to call someone. So uh, would, did, did they offer you a ride home? Or yeah, you had yeah, to have yeah. Somebody with the you. keys, buddy. <laughs> yeah, no, no, uh, you had to get driven there and then driven back. Okay, so okay. that was part of their rules. So yeah, that's that sounds like I mean I. Uh, the learning side of it sounds uh, fascinating. I would love to do it just for that, just to see how that stuff works. I did a, I did one of those pay us pay you for your opinion things um i only got paid three dollars but uh (laughs) was that because your opinions were bad no no it was just it was not a i was testing i was testing cologne so i had to spray cologne on each arm tell them which one i liked better and if it made me feel empowered or confident neither of them did but uh i don't know if that's a problem with me or if a problem with the, the cologne that i was i was using i but, think that's uh, why you got three dollars yeah you're like no no these are both dumb there's nothing here <laughs> yeah. one of them was okay the other one was uh the other one was just bad it was just straight bad um but uh yeah then you had to answer all these other questions about it but that stuff i really like that uh the 
I don't know. I like seeing the the way the inside of that stuff works. And it was it was pretty cool you, to sit down and to, to try it. Everyone's there, and they're all kind of like nervous because you're walking out. There's like six cops in this like one room, uh-huh. and they're all giving you the sobriety test, and you're trying to like pass it. None of them, by the way, gave me the backwards ABC thing. Oh, thank even, God. Even yeah, sober, no, I, I was not going to be able to pull the, that the off. The Thunderdome of the drunk test. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the backwards ABCs. Yeah. I've gotten a sobriety test on the street four times. Okay. Uh, <laughs> none of those four times had I had a sip of alcohol. Oh, really? But uh, if you're driving out at like 2.30 in the morning, yeah, they just they assume, assume you're drunk. I, I remember I was coming back from, uh, for whatever reason, a friend of mine and I we liked going to football, uh, high school football playoff games. And yeah. we were in high school at the time. Okay, good. But yeah. uh, it wasn't <laughs> like we were week. just, yeah, uh, no. Um, yeah, I was maybe 17 or something like that. Yeah. And uh, we just wanted to go out and go to football games, I guess, and just eat some terrible nachos. So we had driven to, I don't know, Bedford or something and gone to, gone to a game. We were driving back to Springtown, which is about a 45-minute drive. And I was just cresting the hill into town, and uh, a cop pulled me over. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, little little me behind the wheel of my truck and they pulled me over and they it was the first time i'd ever been seriously pulled over and asked to get out of the car and they thought i was drinking and i don't know i don't know why i don't know maybe if i was a little tired or something like that but he said what have you had a drink tonight I was, dr pepper <laughs> i've just been into a football game and uh likely story yeah son. likely yeah, <laughs> yeah. He pulled us both out and searched the truck and i was like well, well this is legit i thought i was i thought i was done for yeah and i ended up getting getting away Getting away scot free. <laughs> <laughs> Fooled them. Small town cops got nothing on me, but yeah, uh, yeah it was uh, that was I think that was the only time I'd ever been pulled over accused of drinking. I was pulled over once coming back from a jazz festival in Houston. Now again, this was college, Josh, so my hair was a little bit scruffier, uh, same length but just scruffier. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had like a red bandana on. Oh yeah, uh, You're I a looked the part. Yeah, yeah I looked the, the part. Axel Rose. Uh, and I got pulled over, and the cop goes, because uh, I guess. 30, like 45 from Dallas to Houston is a big drug drug zone. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm and from Houston. So, I can confirm that. Yeah. yeah. I, I and can, so he I pulled me over and he was like, uh, son, you just go ahead and be Come honest. On. I was like, no, it's going go to a jazz festival. <laughs> just just <no. laughs> yeah, That yeah. doesn't help things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've got, you got the Hawaiian shirt on, a bandana. Like, there's on. no point that you went to a jazz festival. So sure enough, got me out. Uh, he goes, tell you what, if you let me search your car. Uh, I'll I'll waive the speeding thing. Okay. He's like, deal, done. Yeah. And so he searched high and low and didn't find anything. But he was just he was sure he found yeah. himself a. Oh, he had a he had yeah, you. a dope. you dead to rights. Yeah. But like, nope, just a kid that dresses weird. <laughs> Sorry, man. You know, obviously it didn't happen. But a what if scenario? What if he didn't find anything and just gave the speeding ticket anyway? Oh, like out of frustration. So oh. Uh, yeah, that would have been. I, I don't know how I would have fought that, but I'd have been pretty upset by it. Yeah. Yeah. That, so. that, that would just been cruel. Yeah. Cruel and unusual. It really is. A, it's a power play, man. You're kind of at, uh, you know, it's it's like you. You said you got your truck searched. Like, why would yeah. they search your truck? Hey, did yeah. you consent I, to that? You no, just, yeah. no, I did. I didn't know. I, I was yeah. I, I was 17. I was scared. So I was <laughs> like, yeah. I, I mean, I knew they weren't going to find anything. So <laughs> yeah. it was one of those. It was, yeah, one of those situations. If I had thought, if I had wanted to be more militant about it or something, I said, no, no absolutely not. Come back with a warrant. No, I'd have done it. <laughs> yeah, sure. Or whatever. That's, that's like, what whatever you do. Took. Yeah. As a citizen. member, as a member of, the Volunteer Police Academy of Plano, Texas. I can yep. tell you, uh, they can pull you over for a variety of reasons, uh, laws you know nothing about. <laughs> right. Uh, and they they're ready. Over. The only two things they can't arrest you for. There's two things that they can't arrest you for in the state of Texas. Okay. Again, remember this, folks. Yeah, here it yeah. comes. That's an open container. Really? Yep. They can just give you a citation for mm-hmm. that? And speeding. Those are the two things they can't arrest you for. So if a cop is following a suspicious car, they wait. You make a improper left turn, they can arrest you for that. Oh, okay. And so he goes, basically, if we're asking you, can we search your car, we're being nice. Yeah. Because <laughs> we can arrest you for the – and again, you wouldn't sit in the tank long. You'd be out in a second. Uh, but they can technically put you in, in handcuffs you and detain you, yeah. and then they have every right to search your car. That blew me away. <laughs> they're, they're, there's no reason why the open container in the speeding, other than there's some good old boys down in Austin they, who want to have an open container yeah. Yeah, and b- to drive fast on back uh, on back roads. Yeah. Well, when did it. you go get certified at the Volunteer Police Academy of oh, Plano? Man, when did like, that happen? It was like two years ago. Yeah. Uh, I was out doing something in Plano, and they're like, hey, do you want to come join the Volunteer Police? Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course I do. Absolutely. Have you done anything with that no, at all? No, no. They never called on you to serve? Other than this. Need. No, the only thing that I actually can do is uh, I can ride along in the citizens p- 
patrol okay. car. And for accidents, I can go set up cones. Okay. I can work balloon festival, the balloon festival, in a different color shirt. They don't let you wear the cop ones. They have to wear like orange or pink or whatever it is, like a brightly colored color. Yeah. It says Citizens p- Patrol. <laughs> Uh, and I can uh, – what's that little like, thing you stand on, like scoot around downtown Plano? Oh, like uh, a Segway? A Segway. I, yeah. I can be a Segway security guy. Again, no gun or anything. Sounds all right. Yeah, it's not bad. It was, the training was phenomenal. Like, just to kind of like see the day in, day out stuff. You yeah. had a, we had shoot, don't shoot scenarios. Oh, Ooh. wow. Uh, we had uh, – we went on patrol for a night. Uh, we had all these different things that you do. It was like just blew me away, all the stuff that they have to go through. Are you so CPR cool. certified? I am not. All right. Well, so I'm not an actual. Keep that in mind. There's yeah. that. Yeah, there's that. Uh, and I can, like, I know that that staying alive thing. That. Oh, yeah. I used to hear PSAs about that. What is that? That's the, that is the rhythm that you pump the chest to. Yeah. To the, uh, the, to the song. To staying the song, alive. Staying yeah. Alive. Well, like if somebody's having a heart attack? Yeah. Well, yeah. If you're needing to perform I mean, I, would, I, I think singing song out loud would be kind of offensive, <laughs> but. Uh, well, you yeah. like a hum going, right? <laughs> like a, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> staying alive. Yeah. But I think the, the, the hum or this kind of in your head, keep it going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, today I learned CPR, what you can get arrested for. Um, all right, yeah, no. a, and go yeah. drink for free on the on the cops' dime. Yeah, yeah. if you, you're in Vancouver. Yeah, exactly. You may want to do that because the cost of beer is going up, so you may want to be looking for any opportunity to volunteer drink. The cost of beer is rising. We'll tell you why coming up next here on the lunch break on RNCN. lunch break on rnc and you're watching us on facebook live right now leave us a comment leave us a like leave us a follow and let us know what you think about what we've talked about today and in fact our first topic which uh, we still love to hear your input on is should non-smokers get extra days of vacation since they don't take smoking breaks uh it seems like mostly most people have said no yeah. to this to this uh query and um i'm not surprised by that it seems like a a hard thing to sort of institutionalize and uh yeah smokers they get the uh, it's the trade-off they get to go and uh spend some time smoking but they're smoking it's so. this <laughs> it's this strange societal like step past the velvet line like yeah. we all have to stay and work you can go outside once an hour and just hang out and play on your phone like i don't know yeah it's a, it's it's a non-smoker it feels a little uh, you know a little expository how much are you p- playing on your phone currently though <laughs> probably during the show right <laughs> <laughs> right now yeah absolutely um so as we told you before the break the cost of beer is going up this is terrifying when I heard this headline, cost of beer rising. And this is all by the man who said he was going to make America great again. This uh, is not the way to do it. This is not, way this is not yeah. the way you make America great again by yeah. raising the cost of our beer. President Trump announced a tariff uh, to make things kind of equal and fair across the global economy. A tariff on aluminum, which, as mm. we all know, is what is the outside that's, of our cans of that's beer. That's what goes in beer is yeah. aluminum. And so. soda. Come on. That's America. Oh, yeah. That stuff but, but pl- pumps in our blood. So, yeah. The cost of soda cans is going up therefore you know they're, they're not going to eat that cost no, that gets passed pass on right to the cost of beer yeah right well this tariff doesn't feel very equal and fair I'm no to be honest and I'm, w- I'm wondering if that uh I, I can't remember the last time i had beer out of a can I, I normally don't i usually go for the for the bottle or i guess the draft so i'm wondering if that extends to bottled beer as well i assume they're it's 
they might just want to make up the cost across across the board across the board because kegs are made of aluminum, right? Uh, I don't know. I actually don't I know think the, so. the answer to that question. I feel like kegs are yeah, that sounds right. That can't be aluminum. steel. It'd be way too heavy. So yeah, yeah, aluminum, yeah probably. they're probably they're probably made of aluminum. I would predict the price will go up across the board because the way I see it, being the cynic, cynical consumer that I am, mm-hmm. if the big company, big beer company, has an opportunity to make more money across the board, why wouldn't they? Well, yeah. Well, here's here's the thing. Uh, if if the tariff ever get, ever gets rescinded. That price is not going to go back down. No, yeah. we're right. we're reaching a new level of uh, pricing structure. It is the it is the jet fuel pricing exactly. of alcohol. Yeah. It's, it, it's a crying shame all across the board. I, I was I was <laughs> pretty bummed when I heard it. Uh, and if, even Paul Ryan, the Speaker of the House, uh, said, "There's a warning. This may have unintended consequences." Okay. Yeah, and there we have it. Yeah, the, these are very clearly <laughs> unintended consequences. America goes, "What? Wait a minute!" <laughs> yeah, this is enough to spur a revolution. So yeah, yeah. Obviously, cars also have aluminum, and those are going to go up. But I mean, that to Come me. On. The, pri- the, the cost Who's is small. Cars? Yeah. Well, well, no, the cost is small. We're looking at like 14000 Well, now it's going to be 14100 Yeah. No big deal. Sure. But my can of beer goes from a dollar to a dollar twenty-five. That's a huge jump. I'm gonna yeah. Feel when I'm buying a pack of Reynolds wrap, like, that's going to that's gonna <laughs> hold me sure, up. Sure. Totally. <laughs> so the an, another royal wedding is yep. coming up. Yes. Clearly, I'm very plugged into the scene yeah. of a royal wedding. But I did see a headline that shocked me was the number of guests that will be attending a royal wedding this is prince this is prince harry right yeah, yeah. Prince, prince harry, harry. and Meghan markle Meghan markle yes the um, american yes the the <laughs> infiltrator uh there to do our bidding mm-hmm. and uh part of that is to draw a sizable crowd to the royal wedding and uh so I, they're, yeah they're getting married on may 19th at saint george's chapel sure. now this number i'm about to reveal has nothing to do with the actual family Members. There's no royal people involved with that. So this is just ancillary characters. This is just public people public that are going to be there, yeah, yeah. Uh, to watch the big day. That's 2,600 people have been invited to watch. Uh, the, there's no way if you get an invita- invitation you don't go. Right, yeah. yeah. So they're going to have... They're going to get most of that, I would yeah, think. Yeah, I would imagine. I, I don't know who the a-hole is. It's like, no, nah, <laughs> I'm good. good. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I got yeah. something that weekend. Yeah, that's, I'm all right. <laughs> Thanks, though. Yeah, so I, I, I imagine you obviously go and, and, and you do all that. But I, we were talking about it in the studio. We are going, do you have 2,600 people that you know? No, like I don't, I don't know. And again, I I imagine like you know I think President Obama will probably be invited. The Bushes will probably be invited. Like sure. you know past dignitaries who are technically in the private sector. Uh, but still, I just I if I had to if I did to have a wedding again and invite if the the if I was allowed to invite every single person I have any sort of acquaintance with, and that means people who I've worked with, people who I went to college with that I was friendly with, people from high school, people th- from throughout my life, I that number would not even come close to 2,600 people. It would it would be a, a hundred or a couple hundred at, at best, I, I think, is, is uh, people who I'd reasonably send things out to. It'd be people who would have to look me up, up on Facebook and go, oh, yeah, that guy. That guy, yeah, that guy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, I sure. saw him once, yeah. yeah I'll go. Yeah. yeah. Right, cost of cost of wedding aside, cost of like how much it would cost to feed each one of these individuals, oh, giving absurd. them gift bags. There's no way I could rouse up 2,600 people. Now, are they throwing pepper spray in the, <laughs> yeah. in the wedding no. gift bag, do but you think? You said gift bags for your wedding guests i would imagine at the royal wedding they're gonna have something, get something right? right i mean did, did you do gift bags when you got married to your guests uh no the 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 gift was seeing me yeah exactly yeah <laughs> that was their that was their gift it was seeing me you get and a they got four, some italian food you get a four film black and white strip from the photo booth <laughs> yeah, with exactly. with props exactly <laughs> exactly that is your that is what i'm giving you yeah. congratulations yeah. welcome to the wedding yeah our gift because we had we had three hundred at ours. That's a sizable three hundred and change. That's sizable. Uh, but I had two tables. Like my family fit at two tables. Uh huh. Everyone else was Rachel's fa- family. Oh really? They have a huge. Uh, the Filipinos rolled deep. They had a huge. Family. And they flew in for yeah from the Philippines. Yeah. We had a, we had a, like a handful from the Philippines fly in. So you can't like be rude to those people. No. They flew internationally to get here to see you. So yeah, you got to appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. The one thing I hated about the wedding, like if I could get rid of one tradition, it's that like you had to walk to every table and like shake hands. Ah, uh, yeah. 
That and the money dance. We had to do a money dance. The one? Yeah, where people like give you like a five dollar bill to dance with you for like five minutes. It was uh, so weird <laughs> because here's the deal with that. Uh, the, the bride has a ball because everybody wants to dance with the bride. Sure. It's, it's a fun time for her. <laughs> Me, I'm like the chubby kid at prom yeah. that nobody no wanted to talk to. I got like I got some pity fivers and that was it. Yeah, it was the, not a the schlubby <laughs> Texas husband. It was not a good time for me. Just sitting there going, well, I'm glad she's having fun. Yeah. Uh, anybody? Uh, yeah. At least she's making money for the family because yeah. I'm not. Yeah, she had like two of her girlfriends that saw me just kind of like standing there like you know, twiddling my uh, fake shoes around. And they, came up and they came up and gave me a pity dance. But I've been to uh, two weddings in December just recently. Neither of them had um, had had anybody come around and shake hands. I didn't shake hands with anybody. I, I told totally them that. Oh. Well, for me, yeah, I had to walk around to every table, and my job was to get her to the next table. Because again, and guys, if you're not married, you'll realize this: it's no. not your day. No, 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 no part of it is no. your day. You are there because you're invited, uh, and your job is to make her life as easy as possible. And that pretty much sums up the rest of your life. So uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great microcosm. <laughs> exactly. The rest of your, uh, of your life. The only thing I fought and won for at my wedding, like I fought to have this at my wedding, was I got my own walk down music. Okay. Yeah. Oh, what'd you pick? The final countdown. All right. That's yeah. fair. Now it was now the compromise is we had a little like band do like an acoustical softer sure. version of it, but still. But people knew. It was yeah, yeah. It was the final <laughs> countdown. It was me walking down. Like you know, you get your walk down, I get my walk down. This yeah. is my day as well. And I, then after that it was done. You could have gone for something like the easy fight. You could have gone for like something in the middle, like I don't know, John Mayer or something. Instead, you're like, no, no, no. no. final <laughs> countdown. <laughs> it's your it's your <laughs> It's your only chance. Yep. You got you to take that, yep. right? <laughs> yeah, jump in. and like, I'm doing the final countdown, walk it down, fine, great. So that was the one thing that I had uh, was I got to walk in, and then it was done. Yeah. Do you, look, do you was... look back on, on that, uh, that whole experience? Do you guys look back on that and say that was all worth it, or would you have done it a different way? No, it was worth it. Uh, yeah. And it was really expensive, and it was really one of those things that, yeah, you could have put a down payment on a house instead. Sure. It had been a much smarter move. Uh, but at that time in our life, uh, that's what we wanted to do, and I, I, I regret nothing about our wedding. Uh, we didn't have like funky dance music. We did nothing but Frank's. We had a Frank Sinatra cover band play, so it was all like all right. you know, we classic, had classic stuff. So, you know, it, it was we You're had paying the, people for dances. Open bar was open for like an extra like three or four hours. It was a good time. Yeah. So I regret nothing about that night. It says a lot about you because you've said on this show before, assuming my wife isn't listening, when talking about. Uh, your dogs, which by the way you all love, so I don't know why yes, you said that. You, yeah. you were very clear on that, but <laughs> yeah, when, yeah, when you were today, she is tuned in. I'm sure. Right. Well, yeah. when you're very straight up. You're like, no, no, the wedding was actually totally worth it. Like, I can respect that. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Gl I'm glad. Despite the fact that you said you only got one thing that you had to fight for, um, it still mattered. So yeah. Well, I, I side note, I, I know we're running out of time here. I planned my whole wedding. Like my wife did not like the the thought of planning. She was kind of overwhelmed by it. Yeah. So I I went to every detail. I picked the flowers. I picked the place. I did. Right. Yeah. I brought her the pack. Like she gave the stamp of approval. Yeah. But I planned You're everything. The one doing the yeah. I was work. groomzilla. Like I went to uh, <laughs> groomzilla. Yeah. I did the cake testing. I I was very involved in that process. So nice. It was my day as well. <laughs> On the behind the scenes aspect. Sure. Well, no, it makes sense. At she's least a, you know. She's a Trader Joe's shopper, right? That's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. What, yeah. What, what, uh, what kind of cake do you go for? Uh, I had the spice cake, and oh. she had the, I think, lemon okay. strawberry. Right. I nice. had spice with like chocolate. Phenomenal. Mm. It was seasonal because it. it was November. Perfect. Well, this has been the lunch break on RNCN, where we talk about weddings and our feelings <laughs> and what things make us cry. Um, and you can find us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday right here on Facebook. Search Real News Communications Network on Facebook. Follow the page, and you'll get notified when we go live 12 to 1 Central Time, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Catch the replay on YouTube or on Facebook. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you think, and we will be back on Monday. Everybody have a great weekend.